Hi, I'm Brian Heidelberg, a partner with the law firm of Loeb & Loeb in Chicago and here today with another mini advertising law lesson. Today's law lesson, what we can learn about a $60 million settlement with the FTC. But first, just wanted to say this is probably going to be my last video for the year, starting to snow out, as you probably know. During that time, I get in bed, pull the blanket over my head and don't get out for several months. So I did want to wish you a happy Thanksgiving and a really awesome holiday season. And I look forward to doing more videos and you see me next year. So what are we talking about today? The FTC and AT&T settled for $60 million in reach funds to consumers. Why? Well, we all probably have seen advertising for unlimited data plans. The FTC alleged that plans were not exactly unlimited, that AT&T held back some of the speed of that data, throttled that data for those people who had used as little as two gigs in a billing period. The FTC believed that it was false and deceptive not to disclose that prominently, especially as prominently as the words unlimited in terms of data plan. But wait, don't shut off this video just yet. This is not a case about, in a video about throttling and data plans and all that. This is more about what we can learn from this FTC settlement and it applies to anyone who's creating advertising or marketing materials. So what can we learn from this settlement between the FTC and AT&T? Well, the first thing is there can be a heavy price for false advertising. $60 million, that can buy a lot of marketing for a company like AT&T, but instead it's going to partial refunds for consumers. What else can we learn from this case? Well, a lot of times we hear, well, what's the worst thing that can happen? We'll pull it. Well, no, what we've learned here is the worst thing that can happen, you get hit for a $60 million settlement, and that's not to mention the tons of legal fees I'm sure that were involved in this case, and also the just time and effort that went over several years of AT&T fighting with the FTC over this. So. What can we learn more substantively about the law? Well, we've all heard the word clearly and conspicuously, probably. The FTC doesn't exactly define it. They have put out some materials in the past, like the dot-com disclosures, that have given us some examples of what they mean by that. But there basically are certain things that are so material to a consumer that if they're not disclosed in a prominent enough fashion, the FTC believes that the advertising itself is false and deceptive. So then the question becomes, well, how do we disclose these legal things in a prominent fashion so we meet the FTC's requirements. But before we get to the how-to, what are we talking about? We're talking about material things to consumers, such as under the endorsement guides, the disclosure of material connection, hashtag ad that a uh, endorser or influencer is affiliated with a brand. We want that hashtag ad to be disclosed clearly and conspicuously. What about when a publisher has an article that's actually sponsored by or written by a uh, brand. Well, in that kind of case, we want that native advertising disclosure to be prominent, to be clearly and conspicuous. What about a free offer? So get this thing free, but there's a purchase requirement. So the FTC says that purchase needs to be clearly and conspicuously disclosed. What about when you're offering a price on a particular thing? Let's say it's like a security camera, right? And it's $19 for the camera, but you also have to sign up for a subscription for the security service in order to get that camera for $19. Well, the FTC says that's material. It needs to be clearly and conspicuously disclosed with that $19 disclosure. So what can we learn from this case? Well, the FTC settled with AT&T. And now these rules are not necessarily binding on the world. They're binding on AT&T as part of this settlement. But they did have a definition in this settlement of clearly and conspicuous that I think we can look at and say, okay, this is what the FTC believes is how we should be disclosing these important material legal details. So I'm going to look at this now and what did they define clear and conspicuous? Like, well, they said the disclosure must be made through the same means, whether audio or visual, through which the uh, representation triggering the disclosure is made. So for example, you say unlimited 
uh, data, you need to disclose that after two gigs, you will be slowed down. So if that's said in audio, then the disclosure of the two gigs also has to be in audio. So a visual disclosure in size and contrast the length of time needs to stand out from accompanying text so it's easily noticed and understood. So what does this mean to me? It means that the disclosure can't be just buried in the bottom in the legal. It's probably got to be next to in close conjunction with the words unlimited and the type size can't be so small that people can't read it. So looking at this case, what else? An audible disclosure by telephone or streaming video must be in a speed and volume and a cadence so reasonable consumers can understand it. So we all hear that really fast guy talking at the end of the video. If it's a material disclosure, we might wanna slow that person down a bit. So what about on the internet? Well, the disclosure must be unavoidable and it says it needs to be in close proximity, meaning that it can't be found through a hyperlink or a pop-up or an interstitial or other means. It's got to be right there in conjunction next to the important advertising claim. And then, of course, the FTC always says that, listen, your disclosure cannot contradict your statement. And FTC doesn't want you to shout something from the rooftops and take it away in the disclosures. So, that's it for clear and conspicuously. I hope this helps you and your company avoid a $60 million settlement of your own. And until next time, I hope this information was helpful and let's be careful.